this is the fifth lecture, the last one of the five lecture series on polarization. In the last lecture, which was the fourth one, we studied interference of plain polarized light and considered different types of polarizations and their analysis. See, we studied the working of quarter wave plate and half wave plates. Uh, these are the plates made of calcite or quartz cut such as that the optic axis is in the plane, the incidence is kept normal, the propagation is along the optic axis, the extraordinary and ordinary within the crystal they travel with different speeds there is no separation between them and when they come out there is a phase difference between them depending on the thickness it is of a of lambda by 2 path difference in a half wave plate and lambda by 4 path difference in a quarter wave plate leading to producing light of different polarizations. We also studied analysis of plane of different types of polarizations and the mixtures of them plane polarized, circularly polarized, elliptically polarized lights just with the help of a polarizer working as an analyzer and a quarter wave plate. Now, in the present lecture, which is the last one, we shall study the phenomena of optical activity, the very interesting property of some substances. We shall go through Presnell's theory of optical rotation, which explains uh, this phenomena and then the working of polarimeters, half shade polarimeter and bi quartz polarimeter. Polarimeters are the instruments which measure the optical activity, which measure the angle through which the plane of polarization gets rotated. So, let us consider what is optical activity. It is observed that certain substances like quartz, sugar crystals or even sugar in a solution, turpentines, sodium chlorate, many other substances, they rotate the plane of vibration of the plane polarized light passing through them. This figure shows the plane of vibration of the light getting rotated as the light passes through a quarter of a quartz plate. Remember the propagation is along the optic axis. This property of rotating the plane of vibration of plane polarized light about its direction of propagation by the material is called optical activity. Some observed facts about this optical rotation are number one, there are two types of optically active substances. The substances which rotate the plane of polarization in clockwise direction looking against the direction of light, they are called dextrorotatory or right handed and then there are substances which rotate the plane of polarization in the anticlockwise direction and they are called lever rotatory or left handed. Number 2, the amount of rotation theta produced by an optically active substance is found to be proportional to its thickness, theta is proportional to L, I mean proportional to the distance travelled in an optically active substance. Number 3, in case of solutions or vapors, the amount of rotation for a given path length is proportional to the concentration C of the solution or the vapor. The theta is proportional to C, C is measured in grams per cc. Number 4, the rotation varies inversely as the square of the wavelength lambda of the light employed, the theta is proportional to 1 upon lambda square. 
this is rotational dispersion. Naturally, theta will be least for red in the visible spectrum and greatest for violet. Number 5, the total rotation theta produced by a number of optically active substances is the algebraic sum of the rotations theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 produced by individual substances. Some thetas will be positive, will be right handed system, some will be negative if the system is a left handed one. A specific rotation as a measure of optical activity one defines a specific rotation. The specific rotation of a substance at a particular temperature and for the wavelength of the light used is defined as the rotation produced by one decimeter length note, it is not centimeter or meters, one decimeter length of its solution when the concentration is 1 gram per cc. Thus, the specific rotation S is given by theta upon L C, theta is the angle of rotation in degrees, L is the length of the solution in decimeters and C is the concentration of solution in grams per cc. Let us now come to the Fresnel's theory of optical rotation. It is a very interesting theory which explains how the planar polarization gets rotated when a plane polarized beam passes through an optically active substance. The Fresnel's theory of optical rotation this is based on the fact that a linearly polarized light can be considered as a resultant of two opposite circularly polarized vibration. Opposite means as a resultant of right circularly and left circularly of the same frequency, but of half the amplitude. Fresnel made the following basic assumptions. Number 1, when a beam of plane polarized light enters a crystal along the optic axis, remember here the propagation is along the optic axis. It is broken up into two circularly polarized vibrations as I said one right handed and the other left handed. On the left a co course of k z minus omega t along the x axis, this is the incident plane polarized beam. On the right side we have now a by 2 times cos of k z minus omega t along the x axis plus a by 2 sin of k z minus omega t along the y axis, these two together form the right circularly polarized wave plus a by 2 cos of k z minus omega t along the x axis plus with the minus sign now a by 2 sin of k z minus omega t along the y axis, these two together form the left circularly polarized beam. And basically one can consider it as follows. The original vibration along the x direction is divided into two parts and then vibrations along the y direction are added with phase difference of pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 to form the left circularly and right circularly polarized beam. So, the phase difference of pi by 2 gives the left circularly one circular 1 and uh, the phase difference of 3 pi by 2 leads to right circularly polarized beam. Number 2, in an optically inactive crystal, important let us note that in optically inactive crystal, inactive crystals are those which do not produce any rotation. Calcite is an inactive crystal, They're doubly refracting, but optically inactive. The two circularly polarized vibrations so produced travel with the same velocity. The upper part of the figure shows the propagation of the circularly polarized beam, while the lower part shows the composition of the left and right vibrations. Since both the vibrations arrive simultaneously at any given point along the path, naturally they will arrive simultaneously because they are traveling with the same speed. Their resultant will be a simple harmonic motion in the plane of the original vibration, no change as shown in the figure. The situation at the point P in the figure is same as 
at the point Q. Thus, in calcite, which is an optically inactive substance, a plane polarized wave along the optic axis is propagated with its vibrations always in the same plane, no rotation. Number 3, in an optically active crystal, the two circular vibrations move forward with slightly different velocities. In the right handed quartz, the right, <coughs> the right handed or clockwise motion travels faster and in left handed quartz, the left handed or the counterclockwise motion travels faster. This figure again shows the propagation. Consider some point Q in the figure in a right handed crystal along the path of a plane polarized incident beam. Let the amplitude in the plane of the incident vibration be represented by A p in the figure. The right circular component r of this vibration arrives at q first and as the wave travels on the displacement turns through an angle theta before the left handed component L arrives. They are arriving at different instants because the speeds are different. At this instant the two circular motions are in opposite senses with the same frequency, but one is starting at R and the other at L. The result is that the point B prime vibrates along the fixed line B q with the same amplitude and frequency as the original vibration A p and this represents the vibration form of the light at q. Thus in travelling from the crystal face at p to the point q, the planar vibration has got rotated through an angle theta by 2. It is clear therefore, that the planar vibration would under these assumptions rotate continuously as the light penetrates deeper and deeper into the crystal and that the angle of rotation will naturally be proportional to the distance table that is proportional to the thickness of the active material. Number 4, now in order to experimentally show just an experimental verification of this idea that an incident plane polarized beam gets broken up into two circular polarizations, left circular and right circular. So, just to show it experimentally that the plane polarized light on entering an optically active crystal is resolved into two circular polar vibrations, Fresnel arranged a number of optically right handed and left handed prisms with the optic axis parallel to the base of each prism as shown in the figure alternate arrangement of right left right left like this and a plane polarized incident beam. When plane polarized light incident normally on the first crystal surface are the two components, two component circular vibrations clockwise and interclockwise travel along the same direction with different speeds. When the beam is incident on the oblique surface of the second prism L the beam which was faster in the first prism becomes slower in the second prism and vice versa. Therefore, one beam is bent away from the normal and the other is bent towards the normal. The two beams are separated apart while the two travel through the prism L. Again at the boundary of the next prism R the speeds are interchange and the beam that is bent towards the normal in prism L is now bent away from the normal and thus the two beams are separated more and more while passing through the arrangement. When the two beams emerge out they are widely apart and are found to be circularly polarized which can be experimentally checked. Let us go through a mathematical treatment of this analysis to make the things a little more precise. Consider a plane polarized beam E x equal to A cos of k z minus omega t 
the vibrations along the x axis entering an optically active crystal propagation is along the z axis is the amplitude of the plane polarized beam. Within the crystal it breaks into two circularly as we, we pointed out earlier right handed and left handed circularly polarized beams travelling with different speeds that is important travelling with different speeds V r for the right handed and V l for the left handed. The corresponding wave vectors k r and k l are given by k r is equal to omega upon V r k l is equal to omega upon V l. These circularly polarized beams can be represented as E for the first beam E 1 x is equal to A by 2 cos of k r z minus omega t and E 1 y is equal to A by 2 sin of k r z minus omega t together forming the right circularly polarized and E 2 x equal to A by 2 cos of k l z minus omega t and E 2 y is equal to minus note the minus sign A by 2 sign of k l z minus omega t forming the left circularly polarized. You see at the entry point if you put z equal to 0 and add them all the total is just a cos a cos omega t that is the incident plane polarized beam. Now, the superposition of the above is in the crystal optically active crystal leads to along the x direction E x equal to E 1 x plus E 2 x the x components of the two beams E 1 x plus E 2 x which is equal to A by 2 cos of k r z minus omega t plus A by 2 cos of k l z minus omega t and that leads to A times cos of k l plus k r by 2 times z minus omega t and cos of k l minus k r by 2 times z along the y direction E y is equal to E 1 y plus E 2 y is equal to A by 2 sin of k r z minus omega t minus remember this is the minus sign now A by 2 sin of k l z minus omega t this gives A cos of k l plus k r by 2 z minus omega t into sin of k l minus k r by 2 z. You can very easily eliminate t between these just by dividing E y by E x. So, if we do that we get E y by E x is equal to tangent of k l minus k r by 2 times z. Let us call it tan theta where theta is k l minus k r by 2 times z or omega by 2 into 1 by V l minus 1 by V r times z. Thus, the emergent light is plane polarized again with vibrations making an angle theta with the original direction of vibration that which was the x axis. So, the original direction of vibration was the x axis along the x axis the emergent light now makes an angle theta with the x axis it has got rotated and the angle of rotation theta depends on the distance traveled in the material as it should be naturally and the wavelength lambda of light as the speeds V l and V r they depend on it. Let us now consider the polar polarimeters which are the instruments used to measure the angle through which the planar polarization gets rotated when the light beam a plane polarized light beam passes through an optically active substance. So, these are the instruments to measure the angle of rotation. In principle a pair of cross polarizers a pair with their pass axes perpendicular to each other may be used as a polarimeter in a very simple way. So, if we have a pair of cross polarizers no light will emerge from such a combination 
just the Malus law. Now, if an optically active substance is introduced between these two cross polarizers, the planar polarization of the light emerging from the first polarizer will get rotated now when it passes through the optically active substance. Suppose it gets rotated by an angle alpha and the second polarizer now will not be able to block the light. The intensity of the light emerging from the second polarizer will now be proportional to sin square alpha. Just the Malus law, this is cos square of 90 minus alpha. The second polarizer now will have to be rotated by an angle alpha in the same sense to make the field of view dark again. The angle of rotation can thus be measured by fitting a circular scale to the second polarizer. So, we have got a polarimeter to be able to measure the angle of rotation. The difficulty is that in actual practice the field of view remains dark for a considerable angular range of the second polarizer. The range is quite a bit plus minus 10 degrees may sometimes be even more and the measurement of optical rotation is not accurate. There is no provision here for a comparison of intensity between say two regions placed side by side. Polarimeters are designed for this purpose and to measure the angle they have this feature. We shall consider two types of polarimeters. These are Lorentz half shade polarimeter and the second one the biquartz polarimeter. That is the first one. Now, to avoid the ever pointed difficulties of, rem of getting darkness over a considerable range, Laurent designed a half shade device. This device consists of a semicircular half wave plate A, B, C of quartz cut parallel to the optic axis as shown. This is just a half wave plate. Remember, half wave plates are cut parallel to the optic axis, light passes through them normally and ultimately on emergence a path difference of lambda by 2 or a phase difference of pi is introduced. So, it says here it is a half wave plate introduces a phase change of pi between the extraordinary and the ordinary rays passing through it. To it we join a semicircular glass plate A D C as shown. So, the half of the semicircular portion is a quartz and the other half is a glass plate. The two plates are cemented along the diameter A C. The thickness of the glass plate is such that it absorbs the same amount of light as the quartz plate. The idea is uh, that any extraneous loss of light is same in both the parts. Now, let the planar vibration of the plane polarized light incident normally on the half shade device B along P Q making an angle theta with A C. The vibrations emerge from the glass plate part of the half shade device as such no change along the plane P Q. Inside the quartz plate which is doubly refracting the light is divided into two components as we know one ordinary component x x prime and the other extraordinary component parallel to the optic axis along y y prime. The two components travel along the same direction no separation, but with different velocities. The ordinary component moves with greater velocity than the extraordinary component and on emergence a phase difference of pi is introduced between them. Due to this phase difference, the direction of the ordinary component gets reversed. If the initial position of the ordinary component is represented by O m, then the final position is represented by O n. Now, on emergence, the resultant of the extraordinary O l and the ordinary component O n will be O r making an angle theta with the y axis. 
there is the vibrations of the beam emerging out of the coarse portion of the half shaped device will be along R s that is the change. The essential parts of this polarimeter are a monochromatic light source, a convex lens which changes the incident light beam into a parallel one, a polarizer which makes this light plane, plane polarized, then the Lorentz half shade device and then a tube containing the optically active experimental substance. The light beam emerging from this tube passes through an analyzer. This analyzer is capable of rotation about a common axis. The rotation of the analyzer can be read on a circular scale fitted with verniers. The light after passing through the analyzer is viewed through a telescope which is focused on the half shade device. If the pass direction of the analyzing polarizer which is capable of being rotated and is fitted with a circular scale. So, when the pass direction is parallel to P q, then light from the glass portion will pass unobstructed while the light from the coarse portion will be partly obstructed and due to this the glass half will appear brighter than the quartz half. On the other hand, if the pass direction of the analyzer is parallel to R s, light from the coarse portion will pass unobstructed while the light from the glass portion will be partly obstructed, thus the quartz half will appear brighter than the glass half. If however, the pass direction of the analyzer is parallel to A c the y axis, it is equally inclined to the two plane polarized lights and hence the field of view in the two halves will be equally bright. Thus, the half shade device serves the purpose of dividing the field of view in two halves and a little change in the direction of the pass direction of the analyzer makes one half brighter, other half darker. Measurements can be done in a much more accurate way. So, when the analyzing pole is slightly rotated from the position of equal brightness, as I said a marked change in the intensity of the two halves is observed and the measurement could be carried out with much more accuracy. In the experiment to begin with, the experimental tube is filled with water, the telescope is focused on the half shade device and the analyzer is rotated till the two halves are equally bright. This position is noted on the circular scale. The tube is then filled with the optically active solution and placed in position. The analyzer is rotated and is brought to a position such that the two halves are equally bright again. This new position is noted and the difference between the two readings gives the angle of rotation pretty accurately. Now, we come to the pi quartz polarimeter. This is a little more sensitive than the Lorentz half shade plate. Here a monochromatic light is not used rather than we use a white light, maybe a mercury lamp. It consists of a white light source, a convex lens as before which renders the light into a parallel beam, a polarizer changes the incident beam into a plane polarized beam, then a bi quartz plate then the experimental tube containing the active substance and that polarizer working as an analyzer as before and a telescope fitted with a circular scale. The telescope is focused on the bike quartz plate. Now, the essential piece is the bike quartz plate. It consists of two semicircular plates of quartz, one of left handed quartz L and other of right handed quartz R, each of thickness about 3.75 millimeters. Both are cut perpendicular to the optic axis. This means the propagation is along the optic axis now. They are joined together along the diameter P q as shown in the figure. L for the left handed quartz and R for the right handed quartz joined along the diameter p q. 
when the plane polarized white light passes through a bi quartz plate normally along the optic axis, the phenomena of rotary dispersion occurs because the planes of vibrations of different colors are rotated through different angles. Remember we have seen that the amount of rotation is proportional to 1 upon lambda square and rotation will be in one sense for the left handed portion and the other direction for the right handed portion. The amount of rotation is maximum for violet which has the minimum wavelength and least for red. The sense of rotation is opposite in the two halves. The amount of rotation also depends on the thickness. For a thickness of 3.75 millimeters, the rotation of the plane of polarization for yellow light is about 90 degrees and hence y o y is a straight line. If the path direction of the analyzer is parallel to p o q, p o q the yellow light will not be transmitted through the analyzer malus la and the appearance of two halves will be similar. The two halves will have a grayish violet tint called the tint of the passage. When the analyzer is rotated to one side from this position one half of the field of view appears blue while the other half appears red. If the analyzer is rotated in the opposite direction, the colors are interchanged. The first half which was bluish earlier now appears red and the second half which was reddish earlier now appears blue. The position dependence of the tint of passage is very sensitive and is used for accurate determination of the angle of optical rotation. The experiment may be performed in the same way and the angle of optical rotation measured as with Lorentz half shade polarimeter. And with this we have come to the end of this lecture. Actually we have come to the end of this lecture series of five lectures. We have uh, almost covered all aspects which need be covered in a series on polarizations. I hope you have enjoyed these lectures. Thank you very much for watching and listening.